All right, checking back in. Had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the first time. Uh, it's actually the first time we're doing this directly on Facebook Live. So, of course, you can't do a training without having any of the technical issues. But uh, if you're watching this, I want you to guys comment down below and let us know if you're watching this live with hashtag Team Live. If you're watching the replay, let us know with hashtag Team Replay. Now, for anyone that's watching this, uh, basically the reason we came up with this process was because we had a lot going on in our lives and we needed a way to be able to plan and really be intentional with everything that we're doing. So we had two kids, we have three businesses, and <clears throat> we really just needed you know, a process that would help us get everything organized so that we can make progress both in our business and then achieve our life goals. And as we started doing this and started sharing it with other people, we had a lot of people that were really impressed with the process, said it really helped them get clarity and help them focus on the right things. So that's why we want to share this with you guys, because we know how important it is to make sure that you're working in the right direction and all the effort you put in is actually getting you to where you want to be in life and helping your business grow. Now, with that said, we're going to be covering a lot in this session. So get a notebook out, make sure you're taking some notes and know that you'll probably have to go back and watch this again because there is a lot of content here and we found the best way to actually go through this is to watch a section, pause it, complete that activity and then come back and do the next one. So with that said, here's what we're going to be covering today. So first off, we're going to be describing what you want your life to look like. This is an important first step because if we don't know where we're going, it's going to be a struggle to get there. Next up, we're going to define a roadmap to take us from where we're at today to where we want to be. And then with that, we've got to put a process in place to make sure that as we're working on all of the tasks that we have to do, we're in the right direction. Uh, a big thing we're going to do next is then help you guys prioritize. You know, everyone that talks to us says, I've got way more tasks than I have time for. I'm not sure how to prioritize. So we're going to give you some simple, actionable steps to help you guys prioritize everything that's going on and everything that's on your to-do list. Then we'll help you guys track your progress. Because one of the challenges we see with a lot of people is they do a lot of work, but they're really not sure if they're making progress towards their goals or if they're even going in the right direction. And then finally, we'll help you distill really who you need to be in order to make all of this stuff work and ultimately achieve your goals. All right, so to start this off, I want to introduce you guys to Sam. So Sam is a pretty typical guy. I uh, went to college, went out and got a job. And, you know, at some point along the way, Sam just got frustrated and he realized that he wanted more out of life. There's more that he can give and he should be accomplishing more, but he just feels like he's caught on this treadmill on this, you know, path that really isn't what he wants. And so Sam is looking for a lot more out of life and he's ready to make a change and really go out and achieve the goals that he's looking for. Now, with that said, it's not just Sam. Sam also has a family. So as he's going to define what he wants his life to look like, he's got to make sure that he's also considering what his family wants their life to look like collectively, and then what's going to be required to make sure that the whole family is successful. So this is something that a lot of people often miss is that it's not just about you, but it's about your family and the close people to you. So the whole point of us going through this workshop for you guys is we want you guys to have more of the ideal moments in your life. We want you to be able to spend time with your family. We want you to be able to achieve the goals and the life that you want. And we want to help you take some of the stress away because we've been there. It's been a lot of work for us to build our businesses. And these methods will help you guys get clarity and help you focus on the right things so that you can have more of that time that's important for you. All right, now with that, step one of six, the first step is going to be describing what you want to have. So we're going to go back to Sam, and Sam says, I want to be an entrepreneur, but my spouse doesn't get it. And I was right back where Sam was. I knew that I wanted more out of life. I knew that I wanted to build a business to get there, but Ariana just was not on board with that at all. And Sam's looking at it like, you know, I've worked so hard. You know, I went to college. I did everything I should be doing in a job. And I'm just not progressing in my career at the pace I want to. And even if I am, it's not getting me to where I want to be in my life. So there's two common mistakes that we see people do as they go through this process. The first one is they don't connect the business 
with the vision for their life. And what tends to happen in this case is that someone may build a successful business, but they're unhappy. And ultimately, even though the business is successful, their life has typically fallen apart because they've neglected their life to make the business successful. And what we actually want you to do is make sure that the business is supporting the life you want, not taking away from it. And secondly, second big mistake is not including your spouse in the conversation. And like I said, I experienced this and it actually made our journey a lot more difficult because I was trying to plow forward and make all this stuff work. Whereas Ariana was like, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. You know, and so we, we were kind of at odds with each other until we really sat down and went through this process and got aligned on what we want our lives to look like. So make sure as you go through this process, you're connecting your business to your life vision and you're also including your spouse and your family in this conversation. All right, so first off, we want to look at what does your ideal life look like? So there's a couple of ways to think about this, and it's usually a challenge when we ask people this question because we're, we're all in this rat race, and we just kind of live our days, and we don't really take the time to step back and say, okay, if I could design my life, what would that life look like? So one activity that's uh, really useful is defining what a perfect day looks like for you. So if you could design your day, what would that look like? What time would you wake up? What would you do first thing in the morning? And then what would the rest of your day look like? What would you be doing? Who would you be spending it with? Another activity that's really useful here is thinking about the big picture. So if you were to look out sometime in the future, 5, 10, 20 years, what kind of life do you want to have? What sort of things do you want to be doing? You know, by thinking this way, you can then start working backwards and understanding what you got to do today. And then finally, what things are important to you and your family? You know, what are those things that you want to make sure are part of your life that maybe are there now, but you're not getting enough of, or maybe they're completely absent in your current life? So you've probably heard of this before, and we take a little bit of a different approach on creating a vision board, but we believe it's so important and it should be the starting point. So what does a vision board look like? Essentially, it's defining what you want your life to look like in the future but we break it up into four specific categories. First off is experiences. What experiences do you wanna have in your life, right? Do you wanna be able to go on trips? Do you wanna be able to spend more time with your family? I mean, one thing for us is being able to take our children to Disney World. That's a big thing that we have on our vision board and being able to really travel more with them. Next up is things, you know, what sort of things do you want to have? Do you want to have a nicer car? Do you want to have a better house? So having things isn't necessarily a bad thing, but on your vision board, you want to make sure you define what are those things that you want to have. And now the first two are really about you, but this third one we found to be really impactful for entrepreneurs and it's what impact do you want to have? So as an entrepreneur, you're likely going to achieve success and have the experiences you want and have the things you want. But a lot of entrepreneurs feel unfulfilled because they forgot about the impact piece. And if you talk to anyone successful or if you've experienced this yourself, you know that when you're making an impact and helping others, it gives you a certain level of happiness that just experiences and things may not achieve. And then finally, what do you want out of your uh, either career or your business? You know, what are the things that your career business has to do to enable the first three things? So we recommend taking a little bit of time once again with your spouse and creating this vision board and really putting on what you want your life to look like in the future. And so what does this accomplish for you? First thing, it's going to connect the dots and it's going to make sure that each piece is supporting each other. So the business supports your family and your family supports the business because these things have to be integrated and aligned. Otherwise, you're going to be running into a lot more issues and stress than you need to. And second off, it's going to give you motivation. I'll tell you, the first time we did this, I really never thought about the future and what our lives could look like. We were just kind of stuck in that rat race. And as a result of going through this activity, I was like, wow, we could actually have that life. That would be pretty awesome. And then as a result of doing that, it gave me more motivation to put in some of the extra time and some of the extra investment that was going to be required to build the lives that we wanted. All right. So up next, once you have your vision, step two is going to be defining what you need to do. All right. So let's go back to Sam. Sam says, all right, I have a vision. Now, what the heck do I do with it? 
So what we're going to do next is actually break your vision board down into a roadmap. So we want to understand how do your big goals fit into your timeline? And then we want to be able to break them up because those big goals are sometimes overwhelming and it may be difficult to figure out where do you start and how do you start making progress on those. And then finally, we want to set up a system so that as you're going through this process, you can check in on how you're doing and make adjustments along the way. So this is an example of what we use for a roadmap. You'll see on here that we've got your vision really along the left-hand side. And then we start with 10 years and we go 10 years, 5 years, 3, 2, and 1. And then we break the current year up into 90 days or 4 quarters. So you can change the numbers on here if you want. It's not really that important. What's important is that you've got smaller time frames that are leading to bigger time frames. So some people don't like to put 10 years out there. They think that's too long. Some people like to put 20 years out there to really think big. So the key thing, like I said, is making sure that these are incrementally, they're smaller and then they incrementally get bigger towards your vision. So when you build this, what's it actually going to look like? So along the left-hand side, you're going to take the items off your vision board and you're going to put them up there. So let's say, for example, going back to Sam, one of the things that he had was he wanted to quit his job. So now with that laid out, what we're going to start doing is laying out the goals on the correct time frame of your roadmap. So you can see here, Sam has talked to, you know, his significant other. He's talked to his family and he said, you know, three years seems like a good time frame for me to quit my job. So now once that's laid out there, we can start comparing that with all the other goals and make sure that we're not overloading some of these time frames. Because what happens with a lot of people is they tend to put all of their goals into a single time frame. And then it's tough because they're splitting their focus between multiple things. And then finally, you can start working backwards and saying, okay, if I want to quit my job in three years, what does that mean I have to achieve in two years and in one year? And you can start working backwards to understand what the smaller milestones or pieces are that you have to do to go from where you're at today to where you want to be. And so what does this accomplish for you? The biggest thing this is going to do is it's going to allow you to have intentional planning. And like I always tell people, this is going to give you direction and it's basically going to act like your North Star. So a lot of people, when they get into goal planning, they may fall off or they may not quite achieve what they're looking for. But what we want to make sure you're doing is going in the right direction. So if you think about it, as long as you're headed in the right direction, even if you only complete 50% of a goal that you laid out, you're 50% closer to where you want to be. Whereas if you don't necessarily have a direction you're going, you might complete 100% of a goal, but if it was in the wrong direction, it's really not going to help you get to your vision. So just by laying this out, it helps give you that roadmap of where you want to go so that as you start progressing on your goals, you're going in that right direction. All right, so next up, step three, going back to Sam. Sam says, great, now I have a vision and a roadmap, and I'm pretty happy. But you know what? I started on it, and then things got busy, life got in the way, and what the heck do I do now? So this is where having a process is so important. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to really set different check-in points. And I like to tell people that this is like GPS, right? So your vision is going to be the destination. And then your starting point is going to be where you're at today. And what does GPS do that's so powerful? It maps your plan or your roadmap, and then it sets check-in points. And if you say miss a turn, it lets you know, and it lets you know that you have to adjust. What this also allows you to do is get consistent and start forming this as a habit so that you're always checking in and you're always making smaller adjustments rather than, for example, setting your goals in January, kind of forgetting about them three weeks in, and then checking in a year later and realizing you didn't hit your goals and starting that cycle over again because that's not good for anybody. And then a key thing as we go through here, just like your GPS, you're not going to follow a straight path from A to B. So we're going to lay a plan out here, but you're going to want to make sure you have a process in place to know when that plan has shifted and when you need to make some shifts. And finally, the thing that we'll tell you guys is we've been doing this process for a long time and we've made tweaks and really refined it along the way to make sure that it's working for us. So don't feel like you have to go crazy and overwhelming when you start this out. Start simple 
and then reflect on the process and really make it yours based on what's working and what's not working for you. Okay, so just a warning, this might seem a little bit overwhelming, but I'm going to walk you guys through it. So these are the different meetings that Ariana and I have as we walk through our business. So let's start at the top. So once a year, we do our annual goal planning. And you're going to see as we go through each of these, we're going to follow a similar process. It's just the time frame is going to be a little bit different. So once a year, we'll take a day, sometimes two days, and really focus on goal planning for the year. And that process looks like starting off, we're going to reflect on the previous year. So when we do this this year, we're going to look back at 2017 and say, all right, what went well and what didn't go well? And what do we want to improve or make better for next year? So it's going to let us reflect and really understand how this year went. And then we'll also do a SWOT analysis, which we'll get to in a little bit, on our business and just see how is everything going. We'll also review some of the metrics and see how we did on our goals and figure out if we need to adjust or shift some of those goals, especially looking out beyond a year. And then finally, with that reflection done, we'll then look ahead at the upcoming year and we'll start defining our goals and then breaking those down into 90 day chunks. So what this does is every year we can reflect on our long term roadmap as well as then break down the current year into smaller goals that we can focus on. So then with that, every 90 days or once a quarter, we'll essentially do the same process. But instead of looking at an entire year, we're only going to look at 90 days. So we'll reflect on the last 90 days and say what went well, what didn't go well, what can we do better? We'll look at some of our metrics, and then we'll plan out the next 90 days. You guys probably guessed it. As we go to monthly, we'll do the same thing. And then every week, we have our weekly meeting. And this is probably the heartbeat of this whole process. Because what this allows us to do is plan out our work in one-week increments. And what we found is that by doing this, we can plan out for the one week, and things tend to not change too much. But then we can also reflect and kind of close out the previous week and then move on to the next week. So we have 90 day goals, but we've got basically 12 weeks within those 90 days. So we can be planning and then making adjustments so that by the end of the quarter, we make sure we hit our goals. And then finally, every day we get together and we do just a quick meeting. And with the daily meeting, it's about 15 minutes. And we look at, okay, what did we complete yesterday? What are we planning to work on today? And then is there anything that's getting in our way? And what this allows us to do is really be intentional to be on the same page with, you know, where we're at and where we need to be. And then if there's anything getting in our way, we can raise that up so that we can remove those blocks so we can actually make progress every day towards our weekly goal, towards our monthly goal, towards our quarterly goal, and then finally to achieve our annual goal. So if there's any questions on that, we're actually going to be doing a QA and a at the end. So make sure to leave a comment and we'll go through that at the end. So with all these meetings, what does this accomplish for you guys? The biggest thing is that you're going to be able to reflect and adjust along the way instead of waiting until the very end and then being disappointed. So just like the GPS is going to tell you when you missed a turn, these meetings are going to help you understand when you've missed a turn or when you may be gone in the wrong direction and you can make an adjustment a couple weeks or a couple months in rather than finding out at the end of the year that you completely missed your goal. All right. So with that step four, now that we've got that all laid out, we want to help you guys prioritize and then actually do those planning processes that we talked about. So we're going to go back to Sam. Sam says, awesome. Got my timeline laid out. I've got all the big things planned out. How do I figure out what to do next? Where do I actually start? I've got so many things on my to-do list. When do I do everything? And then finally, how do I know what to focus on? And like we said earlier, this is a major challenge for people, and we all have more to do than we can actually get done. So first step is actually a brain dump. This is one of Ariana's favorite things, but when we're getting overwhelmed, we literally just sit down, get all the thoughts and ideas and to-dos out of our head, and get them on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Then we go through and categorize the ideas and projects that we got to do. And then we can organize and actually plan the week out so that we know what to focus on. So this is compliments of Ariana. This is an example of one of our actual brain dumps. So when we get overwhelmed, like I said, we throw this all on the board. And then it can help us to focus on, you know, what are all the things that we have? And then what's important? 
So we actually really are big fans of color coding. So you'll see along the left, that's all of our personal stuff. So we had to prep for our son's birthday party. We had to get a new roof on. So there was a bunch of stuff in our personal life. But then we had our real estate business. We had our wine and liquor store. And then we had the different aspects of our coaching business. We had a lot of stuff going on. So we dumped all of this out onto the board. And then you'll see the dots. We actually went through and identified what were the top things we had to work on that week. So how did we figure out what we were going to work on that week? Well, we grouped everything, like I said, between our personal tasks, and then we actually did it by each business. But if you only have a single business, one of the ways we like to help our clients is to break it down between what business tasks you have to do to sustain you know, your business. Basically, if you didn't do anything to grow, what would be the minimum amount you'd have to do to keep your business running as is? And then we also break it out into what are the business tasks that you would need in order to grow your business? Because you should be spending some time each week sustaining and growing your business. And as time goes on, you actually want to spend less time sustaining because you're automating, getting more efficient or outsourcing that. And then you want to be spending more time growing your business. So once you have your categories laid out, what you can do for each of those is really identify which are the most urgent and important things to get done for each. So that's what we did with those dots by figuring out what did we really need to focus on. And then we could let the other items that were not urgent but still important drop out for a future week. And so how we did that was by using something called the Eisenhower Quadrant. And if you guys haven't seen this before, this is such a great way to help you really prioritize everything that you need to do. So what it does is it basically says, okay, is the task important or not important? And is it urgent or not urgent? And by identifying those, it then tells you basically, okay, based on which category it falls into, what should you be doing? So the things that are urgent and important, like we just saw on the previous slide, those are going to be the things that we prioritize at the top of our list. And we're just going to do those. The things that are important and not urgent, we're going to schedule to do. So we might do them this week. We might do them next week. We might do them next quarter. The things that are urgent and not important, that's what we want to delegate out because it's not important stuff, but it's got to get done. So we want to make sure that it is getting done, but we can outsource this to either automated tools or even an assistant or a contractor. And then finally, this might feel a little challenging, but the things that aren't urgent and aren't important, we're actually just going to get rid of. And a lot of people have anxiety when I first say this because they feel like they have to have all of these things. But the reality is if they're not urgent and not important, you're not going to get to them anyways. And what they're doing is just causing additional baggage on top of everything else you got to do. And they're causing you not to get the important things done. So when you do your brain dump, if you go through and quantify each of your activities, you can then start figuring out what should you be doing with each activity and when should you schedule them. <coughs> All right, so then you're going to organize and plan your week. And if you know us, we're big fans of Kanban, Scrum, and really Agile. And I've been using this method for about 10 years, first in my corporate career, and then at home, and then also with a lot of the entrepreneurs that we work with. And it's really a simple process that's going to help you avoid overwhelm. So if you see on here, basically we've got a to-do column, we've got a doing column, and a done column. And what you're going to do is when you figure out the tasks that you're going to focus on this week, you're going to prioritize them in your to-do column. And you'll see here there's different colors. We end up color coding our personal stuff and then each business so that we can clearly identify if we look at this week, where is the majority of our focus going to be? Is it going to be on personal stuff? Is it going to be on a specific business? Then what you'll do is you'll plan out one week at a time. And then when you start working, when you sit down to do work, you're going to pull the top priority task into your doing column. And then you really want to focus on getting that task moved over to done before you pull another task in. So a lot of people end up splitting their focus and multitasking. And as a result of doing that, they end up not getting anything done and they're very busy, but they're not completing anything. So what we want you to do is to really focus on ideally one to two, but at a max three tasks at any point in time. And what that's going to allow you to do is actually get more done, make more progress, and then keep that momentum going. So when you get things done, don't throw them away. Because when you do that weekly review and weekly planning session, you're going to want to look at everything that you had done and really congratulate yourself. But then you also want to look at what things didn't you get done that week 
start diving into why. And then when you're setting up your next week's plan, make sure that you put a process or a change in place to make sure that you're getting more done. And just so you guys know, I like to target getting about 80% of the tasks done each week. Because realistically, if we can consistently get about 80% done, we're going to be in a good spot. So some people try to overload and get too much stuff on here, and then it really demoralizes you by the end of the week. So you want to do realistic planning here. And so what does this accomplish for you guys? The biggest thing it's going to do is help you stay focused. And by going through this planning process the way we described it, it's really going to allow you to not have what's called shiny object syndrome. And that's basically when you're hearing all these different ideas, all these different um, tools that you can use, and you end up splitting your focus across all of them. Because if you clearly know what you want to focus on this week, then as you're going through and doing this process, you can make sure that the tasks are aligned with your bigger picture goals. And if something comes in and it's not urgent, it's not important, you now know how to prioritize that so that it's not distracting you. All right, step five, tracking your progress. Now, if we go back to Sam, he says, this looks great, but how do I know if I'm actually getting closer to my goal, right? I'm spending extra time like outside of work, away from my family, and I don't know if I'm actually progressing towards where I want to be. And, you know, you tell me to measure these things. You tell me to put metrics in place, but it's difficult to measure some of the stuff in my business. So what do I do? Tracking your progress is one of the most important things that people overlook. And sometimes it's because it's difficult. Sometimes it's because they don't know what to track or how it's ultimately going to help them in their business. So what you want to be doing is figuring out what metrics should you be tracking. And that's usually a big challenge for people. And then you want to figure out how do you actually track those metrics and then when should you be tracking them. And then when things don't add up or when your metrics seem off, what should you be doing? So assigning metrics, we're going to use a pretty basic example here. But before we get into that, I want to give you guys a non-business example to help with this. So a lot of people you know, are looking, they set goals to get healthier, for example. And when they do that, they might say, I want to lose 15 pounds. So when we have people set goals, one of the things we tend to do is put it in a specific format. So we say, maybe I'm 200 pounds now. I want to get to 185 pounds by the end of March. So when you set your goal, you can say, I want to go from 200 pounds to 185 pounds by March 31st. And by doing that, you make it very clear on what you want to achieve and what the end result is. But the challenge with doing that is you don't know if you've achieved 185 pounds until you get to March 31st or until actually after it's already happened. So what you want to do is you want to track the end result metrics called the lagging metrics. But then you also want to track the metrics that are going to basically predict or help you determine if you're going to achieve your goals. So what might that look like for exercising well, or for weight loss? Well, there's two things that really help guide you on whether you're going to achieve your weight loss goals. The first one is reducing the number of calories that come in, right, eating less food. And then the second one is increasing how much you're working out or how many calories you're expending. So if you were to track, you know, how many calories you're taking in and make sure that that's under the amount you need a day, and then if you were to also start exercising and expend more calories, doing that every day and tracking that is going to predict and basically tell you that you're going to lose weight that week. So that's how we look at what are the metrics we can use to help predict what the end result will be. So hopefully that was helpful. If there's any questions on that, again, leave them in the comments and we'll be answering those at the Q&A at the end of this workshop. So now let's go back to business. Let's say that you have a Facebook group, for example, and your first step in really getting clients in to be able to sell is to get them in your Facebook group. Well, one of the metrics you might look at is how many new members have I added to my Facebook group each week, right? So in this example, we see week one, we added 20, week two, we added 15, week three, we added five, and then week four, we added 30. So by looking at this, we now know that the first step of our process, what that looks like each week. Now, when we get members into our Facebook group, we may also want to get them on our email list. So we can track that metric. How many new email subscribers did we get each week? And then finally, the reason for getting them in our Facebook group is so we can engage with them. 
The reason for getting them in our email list is so we can engage with them even further. And then finally, what we want to be able to do is to sell them a product, right? So if we track those three metrics, the selling the product's the end result. But if we only track that, we're going to get to the end of the week and really be guessing on whether we're going to be able to sell the number of products we need to, to have our business be successful, to live the lives we want. So what we're going to do here is actually look backwards and each week track, okay, how many new group members? Then how does that lead to subscribers? Then how does that lead to sales? And what we can see, for example, in this first week, we had 20 new subscribers and we actually ended up getting 30 new email subscribers and we sold 10 products. That's awesome. Then if I look at week two, we only had 15 email subscribers and that led to a lot less email opt-ins and that led to a lot less sales. So we're going to look at that and instantly say, wow, we sold half as many in week two versus week one. What did we do in week one that was working so well? And then what did we do in week two that maybe dropped off? And that got even worse in week three. But if we're looking at these metrics each week, what we can do is then make some adjustments week three so that we get back to numbers like week four where we're getting a lot more people in and we're actually selling more products. All right, so how do you know when and how to measure? So one of the big things you want to look at here is you want to look at metrics that are actually going to cause you to make a decision. So what a lot of people end up doing or getting wrong when they look at metrics is they look at what we call vanity metrics. So a vanity metric, for example, would be something that always goes up. So if we're going back to Facebook groups, a vanity metric would be, what's the total number of group members that I have? And realistically, that, that number is going to go up each week. So it's not really going to really tell us if the stuff we did the prior week from a marketing perspective actually is helping our business. But if we were to look at, say, the number of new members, we can see how that's changing week to week and see how our marketing efforts are working for that or not working. And then you want to make sure that I, I like to check in on the key numbers each week, but ideally at least each month you're checking in on those numbers so that you can plan for the next month. And that way you've got a couple points to be able to change or direct course when you're going to make sure that you're getting to your quarterly goals. So I know I went through that pretty quick, but once again, if there's any questions around metrics, leave them in a comment below and we'll go through them at the end of this. So finally, what do you do when things don't add up? First thing we look at is, you know, were your expectations too high? So a lot of people talk about setting really big goals but they don't realize that the impact of that is you actually lose momentum. So if you set a totally unrealistic goal and then, you know, people say, well, you know, aim for the, the moon. And if you miss, you'll still land above the stars. But the reality is if you aim for the moon and you miss really bad, you're going to be demoralized and you're likely not going to be able to keep things going forward. So sometimes it's really just about level setting expectations to something that, is realistic, but maybe a little bit outside of your comfort zone instead of a lot outside your comfort zone. The second thing you want to look at is, are you tracking qualitative or quantitative metrics? So most of the time, like what I just showed was quantitative metrics. They're things that you can add up or that you can put on a spreadsheet, but sometimes they don't tell you enough, right? So we might have to go and get qualitative metrics, which are difficult to track in a spreadsheet, but give us a lot more information. So for example, if we were trying to sell a product and it just didn't seem like anyone was buying, a way to get qualitative metrics is to try to get those people on the phone and say, hey, you know, Alex, this product we built just for somebody like you is going to help you solve this problem. I'm just curious, why aren't you buying? And Alex might come back and tell you some very useful information that you would have never got from just looking at the numbers that we looked at previously. So sometimes you got to look at how and what metrics you're gathering, and maybe you're switching it up between quantitative and qualitative. And then finally, there might be things that are getting in your way each week that are stopping you from achieving the results you want. So that's where you want to look at, okay, what is getting in my way? And if I can remove that, can I then achieve those results? And so what does this accomplish? Tangible, visible proof that you're moving forward. And I'll tell you, this is one of the biggest things that we need as entrepreneurs, right? Like I said, when you're not getting traction and when it feels like you're putting in a bunch of work and not seeing any results, that can be very frustrating. We actually had a group member last week who posted up and said, you know, I've got all these people coming to my website. I've got all these people that seem to be liking my stuff, but I'm not making any sales and I'm just demoralized. And as we went through that conversation, it was interesting. So this entrepreneur had been in business for three weeks. 
they had gotten thousands of people to their website and they had gotten some people to opt in. So you're not going to instantly make sales in your business. There's going to be some stuff you got to do beforehand. So if we're looking at her leading metrics, getting people to the website's the first step. That's looking great. Then we can look at, you know, okay, what's the next step? Getting them on your email list. Okay, that's looking great. So we can keep going through the steps in the process until we figure out where people are dropping off. And then that's where we want to focus our energy and attention to get the most bang for our buck. And finally, step six. I told you guys there was going to be a lot on this workshop. Distilling who you need to be. So Sam looks at this and says, you know, there's so many successful people out there. I feel like they know so much and they already have these successful businesses. How am I ever going to be able to compete? So how do I get there? There's a couple of activities that we really like for this and have really helped us out. So the first one is be, do, have. Another one is checking in on where you're actually at now. And then finally figuring out what identity shifts you need to make. So be, do, have. This activity, I the first time I came across it, it was like mind-blowing for me. And essentially what this comes down to is how do you view situations that come up? So you could view them as a victim or as a victor. And really the, the situations that come up haven't changed, but it's just your paradigm and how you look at that. So if we were looking at something from a victim mentality, and you guys might have seen this before, and you, who knows, you might have actually done it yourself. I know we've done it a lot. A victim mentality looks at someone that's successful or someone that has what you want and they start making up excuses for why that person's successful. You know, well, they were born into money. Well, they were born in this area or they went to this school. And because they had that thing, they were able to do the thing that they wanted, build the business, live the life they want. And as a result, they were able to be happy. So they look at basically what that person has and then justifies what they were able to do so that they could be what they wanted to be. Victims never are successful because they're always coming up with excuses, whereas a victor is opposite, right? They're going to look at it and say, wow, that person is successful. I want to figure out how I can be successful too. So let me look at, you know, what are the key characteristics of who they are and what they do, right? And then I'm going to work backwards. So let me look at what they have and how they've achieved that success let me then work backwards and say, okay, well, what did they do to achieve that success, right? If let's say you wanted to be wealthy, well, you can look and maybe they started a real estate investing business. So you say, okay, well, that's what I've got to do to have that success that they have. And then you take another step back and you say, okay, well, if I wanted to start a real estate investing business, what kind of person would I need to be? What characteristics would I need to have? What education would I need to have? What mindset would I need to have? So what this person's doing is kind of working backwards or reverse engineering that success so that they can make sure that they're starting to have that mentality or that thought process today and they're that person so they can go and do what they need to do to have the success they're looking for. Okay, so another thing here is a SWOT analysis. So this is typically uh, what is used on businesses, but we actually like to use it on individuals as well. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to look at yourself and really say, okay, what strengths do I have, right? What weaknesses do I have? What opportunities exist for me? And then what threats could get in my way or really detract from me? And one of the biggest things I like to do with here is really start to identify what's your unfair advantage, right? We all have some sort of advantage that other people don't. And by going through this activity, you can identify what your unfair advantage is, and then you can leverage that to have success that other people couldn't. And then finally, identity shifts. So who is someone that's successful that you look up to? One of the biggest things we tell people is go find someone who has what you aspire to have or who is who you aspire to be, and then start identifying, you know, what is it that allowed them to get there? What skills did they have? What mindset did they have and what characteristics or habits do they do that you may want to to adjust and start picking up? Because if you can start being that person today, you can start doing what they've been able to do and then have what you're looking to have. So what does this accomplish? So it allows you to understand, you know, who you need to be and what shifts you have to make and start doing them today. So I talk to a lot of my coaching clients that, Say, you know, I, I don't feel confident. I, I've only been doing this for X amount of time. 
And the reality is it doesn't matter about the amount of time you've been able to do it. It matters about, you know, how much knowledge you have and how you view, you know, your mentality and your ability to help people. So a lot of the difference between people that are successful and people that aren't is really just in their mind, not necessarily in how much experience they have. All right, so I know that was a lot of information. We crammed it into a short amount of time, but we really wanted to give you guys all of the steps and everything that we do to achieve the success. So quick recap, you're going to start out describing what you want to have in the future, what you want your life to look like. Then you're going to go through and define what does a roadmap look like? What are some of the incremental goals that will allow you to get there? And then you want to look at the process, right? So what process do you have to set up? How often do you have to check in? And what key things do you want to look at to make sure you're on track? Prioritize with all the tasks and all the things you have to do or the things you could do, which ones go to the top of the list so you make sure you're working on the right things. Progress. How do you look at the right metrics and the right numbers to make sure that you're moving in the right direction? And when you're not, identify that so you can make some shifts. And finally, distilling who you need to be today to make all of this happen. All right, so like I said, went through a lot here, and Ariana and I are actually going to hang around and answer all the questions that you guys have. So went through that pretty quick. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comment box, and then in the next couple of minutes, we'll jump in and actually answer some of your questions. Sorry, my typing. I turned my mic on, everyone. <laughs> All right. So I know what you're probably thinking because people have said this to us before. And they're like, Tom, you just made that seem really easy. But <laughs> how the heck do I actually achieve all the stuff you just laid out? Right. The vision board, the roadmap, you know, quitting my job. There's a lot more to it than just putting a couple sticky notes on a roadmap and then going from there. If I'm looking to build a business to replace my income, that's hard work, right? 80% of small businesses fail within five years or whatever that stat is, right? So in the three successful businesses we've had, as well as the entrepreneurs we've worked with, we've identified three main reasons that entrepreneurs struggle or aren't able to achieve the success they're looking for. First one, I mean, Ariana, we've seen this time and time again. Yep. Too much information, information overload. There's way too much information. I mean, if you go and search on Google or YouTube or listen to podcasts or look at books, there's a ton of information out there. And it's difficult to know, you know, where should I start and what is it that I actually need to do, right? If I'm looking to start a business, where do I start? What are the right set of steps? Second thing, even if you know where to start and what you should be doing, sometimes you don't know how to do that. Yep. Right. I mean, we get questions all the time. Which tool should I use? Should I do this or that? Should I start this business or that business? And then once I figure that out, how do I actually go about doing that? What are those steps? And once again, information overload. Oftentimes there's actually too much information yeah. or yeah. too much training. Right. And then finally, even if you know the, what steps you need to take, you've got the right training. The biggest thing that throws people off as an entrepreneur is really the mindset. And being an entrepreneur can be very lonely, especially if you're used to having a job and having a boss and having peers. When you go into business for yourself, it's easy to take, you know, the failures personally. It's easy to run into those issues and have self-doubt creep in saying, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I should just go back to that job that I don't like or that traditional path because I can't make it, right? So not having that support structure set up. And so with that, we are so excited to introduce you guys to Lifestyle Builders. Whoop, whoop. If you haven't <laughs> seen it in the group. <laughs> yeah. We've only been posting about it for a week. Well, I was going to say, we've been engrossed in this really figuring out, you know, <laughs> what is it that, you know, could really help all the people that we talk to that, you know, maybe they're, they're not at the point where they've started their business yet, or maybe they've started it and it's kind of taken over their life. And Lifestyle Builders is really the summary of all of that. So what is it? Guidance, strategy, support with a dash of accountability. A little dash. A little, little dash. <laughs> because that accountability is so important. Yeah, we've heard that from pretty much everyone we talk to is, is they don't have anything or anyone to keep them accountable. Yeah, and I mean, like, it's not just your average membership site. It's actually mentorship. 
Because what happens far too often is people buy a course or buy a program or join a membership community and they get training, but the training isn't tailored to them and they don't actually have access to people to guide them, people that have done it before. Yeah. Right? It's also cooler than your boss, but it's still (laughs) going to keep you accountable. Because I'll tell you what, the number one thing we've seen and the number one thing people have said to us is that I need accountability. Yeah. I need someone looking over my shoulder, making sure I'm doing the work I said I was going to do. Yeah, I mean, we've even had some people that say, you know what, I left my job because I wanted to be my own boss, but I realized that I need someone to keep me accountable, yeah. right? I kind of need a boss, and I'll tell you, we're pretty cool bosses. Yeah, much cooler. <laughs> much cooler than your normal boss. And finally, to avoid the information overload, simple, actionable steps and training. Because what happens far too often is people just get into this learning mode, right? They're listening to all the podcasts. They're list- or they're reading all the books. They're watching all the videos, but they're not actually taking action. And momentum comes when you figure out the next thing you need mm-hmm. to do. You learn it. You take action on it. And then you keep building from there, right? Right. Okay. So with that, uh, Tom, what do we actually get? <laughs> yes, please answer the question. <laughs> okay. Starting off. Monthly group strategy calls. And this is really the key of what a lot of solopreneurs or small businesses miss out on is your strategy is overall what guides your business. Mm -hmm. So monthly, we're going to get on a live video with you guys and actually work through your strategy. How did the last month go? And then what do you plan to do the next month and give our guidance to you as you go forward? Also, in between those monthly calls, we're going to do weekly Q&As. So if at any point you guys have questions with your business or with your personal life, post them up in our private community. And we're, once a week, we're going to hop on a Facebook Live and just go through and answer these questions for you guys. And we're going to tag you at the specific time we answer your question. So you don't have to watch an hour or two hour long video. You just go to the specific spot where we answer your question. But with that, it's also beneficial to listen to other people's questions because they are probably coming up with things that will help you mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, little nuggets. All right, and then what's up next? The private community. The private community. So we said that one of the challenges that most entrepreneurs face is that they don't have that support structure in place. And I'll tell you, our family, even though we've been in business for 10 years, they still have doubts or worry about us you know, having our own businesses and not having jobs. Right. So even though they know we're entrepreneurs, they know we're successful, they struggle with that. So there's nothing like having a private community of people that understand you and that are on the same path to help you and keep supportive and work through the challenges that come up. All right. This is probably one of my favorites. Of course. It is. Unlike some of the, the, you know, training courses that you guys get, we're actually going to be on one-on-one calls with you guys every quarter. So A lot of times what happens is you join and you get training videos, but guess what? We're actually giving you guys for every quarter that you're part of Lifestyle Builders, we're going to give you a private two-on-one call, actually, Ariana and I, to help you work through your business strategy and any issues that maybe you're not comfortable with on a group call, but we're going to get on -on one-on-one with you. Mm -hmm. How many many memberships do that? Um, Only one that I know of. Yeah, not many. (laughs) (laughs) All right, up next, we've been testing this out over the last couple months, and people are loving it. And this is guided office hours or co-working sessions. And what this is, we talk about that accountability. This is people getting on a a Zoom call or a video call together live. And what we're going to do is we're going to set two hour blocks together. And when everyone gets on, we're going to set our intention. And then we're going to break the two hour blocks up into different Pomodoros, which are basically 25 minute times to work on one task. And by us being on there and guiding you, You're going to hopefully be accountable for getting that stuff done. And if you're running into issues, we'll actually pull you guys aside to a separate room and help give you some coaching and guidance to get through those issues. Well, and as we grow, I think it also is something that we want to build out into um, having those rooms open for members to jump in at any time and do brain working sessions together. Um, Brain working. Brain working. Brainstorming (laughs) sessions. We're a little under the weather here, folks. You couldn't (laughs) tell. So my brain is not completely functional today. 
but just having that the, those Zoom rooms available for people to jump on and and talk back and forth or just sit and work together if they want to. Well, I was going to say, you bring up an important point. So this is what we're starting out with. But one of the things we want to do with here is that when members get in, we're going to be listening to your feedback and we're going to be adjusting this community to meet your needs. Oh, yeah, I guess that brings us to the next point. The last and final item. The quick and simple actionable trainings. So like we said, we don't want to focus too much on giving you guys, you know, 80 hours worth of training that you got to go and consume. So part of this is going to be short and simple trainings to help get you to the next step. <coughs> so you might ask, Tom, what are some of those trainings? <laughs> well, to start, we have a couple that we want to have available. Absolutely. One is actually the training that you're on now, but we go deeper and we provide you with worksheets and additional stuff to actually make it work. So that's plan with purpose. This is making sure that before you start your business, you understand what you want out of life and then what your business has to do to help you. Get or there. more importantly, while you're in the middle of your business, Absolutely. if you haven't done this yet, it can really give you some great clarity and direction on where you want to go. That's a great point. So then next up, find your freedom. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people talk about leaving their jobs and they kind of floss over all the details that are involved in that. And I mean, we have both left our jobs, so we've seen that, but like, how much money does your business need to be making, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are some of the things that you don't think about? Like, how do you pay for insurance and what's the cost of that going to be? Um, how much savings do you have to have set up? Uh, what kind of business do you have to build? Um, you know, what sort of runway do you have to have before you quit? Do you have to wait until your business is completely successful? There's a lot of those incremental steps that people don't talk about. So find your freedom is really going to be that course that takes you through each of those steps. And I'll tell you, we've got some awesome spreadsheets and templates to guide you through each step of that process. Oh, and one of my favorites, we got into so much debt when we started out and we tried to make all this business stuff work. If you guys don't know, I spent $7,500 on a real estate investing training that was complete garbage and we had to pay that back. So we had over $200,000 worth of debt that we were in. And part of Find Your Freedom is going to be Let's show you how to get out of debt and how to set that plan up that will support the life you want and being able to leave your job and achieve that financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And then finally, from concept to cash. So, so many people, when they have an idea, can't go from the idea to actually making money. And a lot of that is because early on, there's a lot of different pieces that you've got to get fitting just right to make your business model work. So from concept to cash is going to take you through a very simple process of actually getting those ideas defined and then testing them out and getting all the pieces tweaked so that your business can actually make money and support you in everything you want to do. If you can't tell I'm a little bit excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So enough about that. How can you guys join? Kept it pretty simple. Two simple options. One, you can join monthly for 49 a month. We really want to keep this low cost so that anyone can get in. Yeah. And if you're excited about this and you want to save a little bit of money, if you join for the year, you're actually going to get two months free. So you only pay 490 compared to you know what that would ultimately be um, if you were paying monthly. Yep, not going to attempt to do math right now. <laughs> All right. And so as we said, the door is open today. And if you join before Wednesday, we're actually going to get you guys in a private exclusive goal planning and strategy session to close out 2017 strong mm -hmm. and then plan out 2018 collectively as a group. And we're also going to give you access to our idea validation course, which is going to help you go through some of that process of validating your idea. Yeah, those two bonuses, um, if you click the join link, it'll show at the bottom when those bonuses uh, disappear. So be sure to check that out. Yep. So with that, if you guys are interested in becoming a lifestyle builder today, the link's at the bottom, tomandariana.com slash join. And I think there's something covering that. I don't know. I think it's on your screen, the hide and show. <laughs> oh, okay. But tomandariana.com slash join. There we'll we keep go. Keep it simple. And then let's get to the Q&A because we did have a couple questions come in um, while you were talking before. So. Beautiful. So let's let's go through it. I will read those off. So first, um, <laughs> oh, my God, we sound horrible. When we were talking about the process, Moshe asked, when is the weekly meeting? It is it the end of last week or is it the beginning of the week? So it all depends on what works best for you. So some people like to do it at the end of the week. And actually, we're typically those people. Um, it yes. lets us close out the week before we get into the weekend. And it lets us plan out the next week so we know what's coming up. So for us, and I would say actually for most people I work with, the end of the week works better. Um, but some people like to just finish their week up and then come in Monday and plan that out. Well, I think sometimes too, we do a little bit of both um, because we do do our daily syncs 
And so Mondays, we always check back in to say, what are the things we're working on this week? And then obviously Monday. Um, but we do like to do our Fridays, what went well, what didn't go well, what can we improve on for next week? So yep. I guess we're a little bit of a hybrid there. Well, and, and that's a great point. You can actually split that out if you want. You Some people do their retrospective at the end of the week, yep. and then they do their planning at the next week. And it's dependent on you, too. I mean, it's what's going to work best for you, what helps you start off the week in a good point, and how, what helps you close out the week. So. Yeah, and you know, when I was working with a lot of corporate companies, what we would end up doing is uh, teams would plan on Wednesday, and then they would end on Tuesday. And the reason for that was because a lot of people took vacation on Monday and Friday. Ah. So that way you're not trying to like get to the end of the week when it was crazy and do your planning. And you're also not coming in like first thing Monday morning being like, oh, crap, now I got to like plan and remember what I did last week. So that's another option as well. So ultimately the answer is it depends. Um, test out some different ones and see what works for you. Yep. Yeah, as always, test. Test. test, um, test. Next question. When we were talking about metrics, uh, Laura asked, do you cross-check to see how many of your Facebook group members are also on your email list, or are you just tracking both metrics separately? So when you start out, I recommend keeping it as simple as possible. So just looking at those three metrics, what, what you want a metric to do is to cause you to ask a question that allows you to go deeper. So for example, if we were looking back at those metrics, we might say, hey, you know what? That's a great question. I wonder how many of the people that are in our Facebook group are joining our email list. And then you can start diving into that and setting up your system to track that. And what's kind of cool with that is you might say, okay, this week, 30% of the new people on my email list were coming from my Facebook group. Mm -hmm. But then next week, it was actually 50%. So then you start asking the question, okay, well, what did I do differently between last week and this week that caused that to go up? Mm -hmm. And I want to do more of that. So by starting simple and asking those questions, like why do the numbers look this way? It will then give you insights and additional things that you can look at. Yeah. Well, and I think it also depends on what you're using to track that. You know, if there's a specific software you're using, if that's going to take a lot more time and setting up on the back end, it might just be easier to track them separately. Or if you've been in business for a while and you have, you know, your systems kind of set up and you're ready to look into some of these deeper items, then you could kind of look into, okay, how can I track which of my Facebook group members are on my email list and vice versa? Yeah, and I mean, it's it's so important with this because metrics can easily get overwhelming to start simple and then use what you're seeing to then build out, like you said. Okay, and then our last question, I believe, I'll double check, um, came when we were talking about Lifestyle Builders, the guided office hours. Uh, Moshe wanted to know, what will the times and frequency of the guided office hours be? I love the idea, but I can see it not working around my schedule. Um, Moshe, you are not the only one that has asked that question. Um, we've had a couple people that joined that asked about when the coaching call, the strategy calls would be, uh, when the Q&As would be. Um, and basically, we are working to get these as convenient as possible for everyone. Uh, we will have different time zones. So I think this is part of the, we're gonna work it out as we go through, as we see what members are where, and as we put the question out to everyone and say, hey, what times are going to work for the most people possible? Um, and then, you know, since it's our group and we can do whatever we want, we can always add second <laughs> second times on for some of this stuff if it isn't convenient for half the group um, and split it out that way. So it's it's all going to depend on what works for best for everybody. Yeah, and I think what's what's cool with that is because there's two of us, we might end up deciding that maybe Ariana runs one at a certain time mm -hmm. and then I'll run one at a different time. Or we might even have some that maybe we're not on, but we're still scheduling for people that want to join on together. So as you said, there's a lot of flexibility. Yep. How are we doing? Any other questions that have come in? I don't think there were any others that came in live. Um, and I think we're just about an hour now. So do you want to hit it on anything else or do we close it out so everyone can actually go back and watch the replay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that I would say at the end is we've worked really hard to make sure that this was hitting the needs that you guys had. And then we want to keep this very affordable because we remember back to how difficult it was when we got started and how challenging it was, you know, really not having, you know, a lot of disposable income, but wanting bigger dreams. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, and I mean, I'm sure you remember very vividly when I thought that I had to spend $7,500 to get into real estate and to start on our dreams. So 
the biggest thing I'll tell you is, you know, you guys have to invest in yourself, but we've intentionally made this a very low price point so that it's easy for you guys to get started. Yeah. All right. And we've got those two bonuses that'll expire either Wednesday evening or Friday evening, uh, respectively. So make sure you head on over and check out the Lifestyle Builders page at tomandariana.com slash join. And we'll be around all this week. Uh, we've got a second workshop. We're gonna be actually debuting the Find Your Freedom workshop for the first time on Wednesday. And we are here for questions, comments, concerns, whatever you've got all week long. All right. So with that, you guys have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day.